Think not, Lord came, be peace on earth. He came, give us a sword. Shalom in the name of the Lord, everybody. Welcome to Time of Night Watchman. Time of Night Watchman, time. Commentary, information, Bible, proxy stuff. As of late, I'm a little bit under the weather. Pun intended, actually. You know, rainy, cold, snowy, and I, of course, have a cold. So I apologize if I have a slight bit of the sniffles, but bear with me. This will be short, sweet, and for the most part, to the point. So, what is today's discussion? Well, you know, keep in mind of pop culture and stuff. This is the favorite. Anyway, so <laughs> there's a lot of contention from uh, quote-unquote Christians. I say that term very lightly uh, with question mark. Uh, in light of circumstance, because, you know, this this is it. It's kind of become us versus them. Yeah. The Hebrew roots people, that I call churchianity slash fluffianity. And we're going to discuss this in part, if not, if not deep. It may take some praying on some of you individual out there who are still on the outside looking in. Uh, but uh, don't despair. God is with us, and Lord willing, uh, he'll deliver you from this. Well, we'll talk about that. Us versus them, Hebrew roots versus Churchy and Fluffy. A. Well, you know, but but since when was God ever not controversial, though? <laughs> I mean, look at Hebrews 4:12. See, the word of God is alive. It is at work and is sharper than any double-edged sword. It cuts right through to where soul meets spirit and joints meet marrow. It is quick to judge the inner reflections and attitudes of the heart. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Anyway, so. So needless to say, it, it would be controversial to people because, uh, let's face it, it is the end of days, and we'll discuss that in brief as well, too, and how this pertains to prophecy. Yeah, huh? Uh, we we'll probably, probably won't go as full as I usually do, but it's just, this is the big uh, topic of contention with some people. I'll explain why it is a topic of contention. All right, so 2 Thessalonians 2.3 says, Complete Jewish Bible I'm using. But this seems closer to what the actual scriptures say than anything else. Anyway, don't let anyone deceive you in any way, it says. For the day will not come until after the apostasy has come and the man who separates himself from Torah has been revealed, the one destined for doom. Now, if we know the book of Revelation, we're doing a past, present, and future. This has been occurring over the millennia. Uh, it should be no surprise to us and aware of the fact that there are people who profess to worship the Almighty God, Yahweh, Yehovah, Elohim, El Shaddai, through Yeshua HaMashiach in this case. Uh, many, many have fallen away and following after lawlessness or, again, doing away with the Torah, which is, essentially means directions that God gives us. So let's try to look behind, behind the lines, if you will, or behind the veil when it comes to things about Hebrew roots. So, again, when you see something behind the lines, you uh, get a new perspective. Uh, some people that without the spirit, well, it's, it's just not going to come to them. It, it's just the way it is. They're, they're just serving the devil. The devil's children, we are commonly referred to the sons and daughters of perdition, the lawless ones. So you, you're not going to convince these people. It, it really takes an act of God for people to change. And why some people think they have to save other people's lives, I don't know, because that is not in the way. That's not our credo. It's here to tell the, the good news. If you like it, great. If you don't, well... Have a nice day. So, and the bottom line comes to this really very simple part. Who do you serve? I mean, look at the scripture in 2 Corinthians 6, 17. It says, Wherefore, come ye out from among them, and be separate, saith the Lord, and touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. Of course, there's much to, to do about this one scripture, especially with touching the unclean things. Uh, I mean, I just don't, I don't get that part, why people invest so much in swine meat. Mm-mm-mm. I said, we talked about this before, about defiling the temple. Well, you are the temple of God. Just think of uh, the sons of Aaron, or our own, if you want to go into Hebrew world. Uh, they didn't go well with them. They, they voted strange fires to the Lord. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Not a good thing. You could also look at Isaiah 66, 17, and what God feels about defiling thyself with unclean things. Yeah. Again, wherefore come ye out from among them and be separate. Now, mind you, being separate doesn't mean we don't congregate, we don't fellowship, or we don't worship together. Or war Yeah, we still do that. Uh, we just don't do it in some of these buildings, you guys, convinced that it's the church. So this is this is the thing that, that kind of brought up the discussion this morning. How do you get from, for example, Psalms 1? Okay, how blessed are those who reject the advice of the wicked. Don't stand in the way of the sinners or sit where scoffers sit. 
Their delight is in Adonai's Torah, and his Torah they meditate day and night. Like two, there's no need to follow God's Torah. <laughs> hey, come on, folks. So how do you get from that to, to, to this? Hmm? Clearly there's an explanation coming. But again, but that's not the first one. See, see, see I come from an old school that you, you read the book from the big front, not the back, and then come up with your own own opinion. That's all that is. All right, so, okay, so again, Psalm 1, 2, there is no need to follow God's Torah. Hmm, weird how that works. Then, of course, let's, we'll explain this a little bit. In Psalm 19, 18, it says, that The Torah of Adonai is perfect, restoring the inner person. The instruction of Adonai is sure, making wise and thoughtless. Now, I asked to explain because of the image here. This is at the Vatican. That's Peter? <laughs> I don't get it. But anyway, so I, you're going to have to explain that one to me. Again, the Torah of Adonai is perfect, restoring the inner person. The instruction of Adonai is sure, making wise the thoughtless. I Again, how, how do you get from there to there? I, I, I don't get that. All right, okay, here, here's this one. Okay. Well, this to the okay, yeah. Psalm 119, 1. Of course, most people know this, actually. How happy are those who, whose way of life is blameless, who live by the Torah of Adonai. How happy are those who observe his instruction, who seek him wholeheartedly. See, hmm, there's a heart issue there. They do nothing wrong, but live by his ways. You lay down your precepts for us to observe with care. May my ways be steady in observing your laws, then I will not be put to shame, since I will have fixed my sight on all your mitzvot, which is commandments. I thank you with a sincere heart, as learn your righteous rulings. I will observe your laws. Don't completely abandon me. Wow. You know, I, of course, I always hear this, but that's in the Old Testament. <laughs> I, I mean, I get, mm. don't get me started. All right, I'm started. Let's move on. All right, so in John 14, 50 says, if you love me, keep my commandments. You think Jesus was speaking anything other than his commandments? The, the explanation of why things are as bad as they are, I mean, we see in prophecy, 1 Timothy 4, now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to the seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. There's a reason why we're supposed to eat meat, folks. I mean, the vegetarians, you know, that's a, that's a short-lived thing. That's okay. You know, something we have to learn our hard way. I, I, mean, I know I'm like that. I'm pretty stubborn. I have to learn the hard way a lot of times. But anyway, so and that, that doesn't mean everything that you think is edible. It's like saying, well, battery acid is good for you. Uh, no. So anyway, let's, let's move on. See, see that point here? Keep my commandments. You love me. See, this is not a want, have to. This is a want to. Well, if you love somebody, you want to please them. You want to make them happy. So therefore, keep his commandments. It, it's that simple. My friend Sammy Walker, he would say, it's a hard issue. <laughs> anyway, so warnings on the label. I will call that that. But we see this in the Bible clearly in Daniel 7.25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until time and times and the dividing of time. Now, th those days of times is actually years, is what I understand. So there's a lot more to that that criteria than people than think one season, which three they say three and a half years. It's actually each day is a year. So think about that. Or is it yeah, each day is a year, three and a half years. Well, however. However that works. Anyway, uh, also we see in 1 John 4, 3 of all places, and every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. If you're not sure what that image is, that's the Vatican to the left, and that's Constantine, Emperor <coughs> Constantine, who definitely helped bring the apostasy in, uh, and lawlessness, son of perdition, so, uh, therefore, be grateful that prophecy is being fulfilled and continues to be so. So, what are we looking for? Well, you know, when it comes to the papacy, especially, I like to pick it on a papacy because they're so, well, antichrist. Uh, they're, the popes are Christ here on earth. That's, that's their thing. <laughs> so, if they're Christ here on earth, then Jesus didn't come in the flesh, did he? Uh, then, then what are you? 
I mean, I don't get it. I don't understand that part. <clears throat> Just something to think about. <laughs> so it comes down to, do you have a personal relationship with God or do you have a religion? Uh, you know, see, see, the people like we who have a relationship with God, we actually get to hear his voice. And I know the psychi psychiatry and psychology is like, oh, look, you should hear voices, whatever, shut up. The point, the point of the matter is we have to get to hear the voice of God. Uh, so who are you listening to is my big question. So is it a relationship or do you have a religion? That's my question. And it's really it's, it's easy for the most part, the way it was shown to me, to accept, just simply accept Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, and you'll be saved. And then you no longer have religion and you have a relationship. And you need to work out your salvation. There, there's a thing a lot of people don't know how to do. Work these days. Hey, God, I'm feeling slothful this around here. Anyway, so you work out your salvation, folks, which means to read and study yourself to show yourself approved by God. Yeah, it means we get to read a Bible. What a concept. Anyway, let's move on. So we're getting back to 1 John 2.18. Little, little children, it is that last time, and yes, you have heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. There has been, and there will be, until further notice, many Antichrists. Nothing has changed yet. That's changed. Actually, it is changing. That, that will be pretty, pretty exciting, knowing the Messiah is coming back and... Ah, he's setting up camp here on earth with us, hang out peacefully, not warring against our own whatever. So, again, there's many antichrists. And if it offends you, these pictures, well, sorry, doesn't offend me. Let's move on. All right. So, Matthew 7 14 clearly says, Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Few that need be to find it. Narrow is the way. I mean, think about that. Are you walking the narrow path? Are you just one of the sons of the door of the perdition trying to make excuses for yourself on the guys that say, well, you're a Christian and you're following Jesus Christ? Are you? If you heart, have heart for the Lord, guess what you're going to be doing? You're going to be observing Torah. Eventually, inevitably, if you have a heart for God, you're going to follow in his ways. Remember that scripture in John? It says, narrow is the way, or what did you say? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one calls it a father but, for, but through me. Narrow is the way. If you're going to get there, I, I, I have to be the bearer of bad news. Many people are not going to make it, even on the guys of being Christian. We know this in the book of Matthew, because in the book of Matthew, it talks about all these wondrous things people are doing, including healing people and laying on hands and uh, casting out devils and demons. And the Lord will eventually, he'll say, I never knew you depart from me, ye do iniquity. So... Just like we have rhinos in the Republican Party, we, party we have sinos, sinos, Christians in names only. <laughs> if you have a heart for the Lord, you are going to observe Torah. It's just the way it is. How do you observe? Find fellowship with people. And say 119 ministry is a good place to start. I'm in a great place right now. Great place to begin. Great place to end. I'm in the Hebrew Roots Messianic community. Yeah, we have our flaws. I mean, you know, who is it? A lot of people bring in their um, doctrines and their culture from churchianity into it, and they're you know they're working it out, getting away from all that nonsense, right up there with the Christmas trees and the Easter bunny stuff. You know there are seven feasts of the Lord. They're not Jewish feasts. They're the Lord's feasts and Lord's Sabbath. Besides, even then back then the Gentiles who were known, and if you read the Book of Josephus, God fears. They observe those laws and commandments. Nothing has changed. The only change is the hearts of men who continue to do evil against him. Hmm. So Hebrew roots. Hmm. I look at Joshua 24, 15. It says, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, he says, we will serve the Lord. Again, I'll stick with the Hebrew roots group. Wherefore come ye out from among them, and be separate, saith the Lord, and touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. 2 Corinthians 2.17. Again, like my friend Sammy says, it's a hard issue. I can't make you follow Torah. That's a want to. If I want to follow Torah. Why? Because I love him. I don't have to follow Torah. All I have to do technically is just die. But the bottom line is, where's your heart at? 
Who are you following? Do you have relationship? Or are you still in your religion? Most people are. Anyway, this is a time of night watch. but a time of night watch time. Commentary information, Bible process stuff. See ya. I sure as hell don't want to be ya. And remember, there's only one way, one truth, and one life. In Jesus' name, amen.